Monday on The CW from the creators of All American. Welcome to Brixton University. A new chapter begins. Well, if it ain't Simone Hicks. I'm juggling school, tennis. It's your journey. What if I made the wrong choice coming to college here? You do you. You are looking at the new face of HBCU baseball. What if I'm not good enough? Basically, you're scared. Every damn day, bro. The highly anticipated new series. Never let anything keep you from your dream. All American Homecoming, premiering Monday on The CW. Friendly new neighbors or vicious squawking intruders? Which one best describes the hundreds of turkeys that are taking Staten Island by storm? The answer depends on who you ask. This one car looked like it had been hit up by bullets or something. I mean, it was there were scratches and peck marks all over the cars. Unless you get every last one, I, I don't see that happening. We're going to have turkeys on Staten Island. So shouldn't the goal be to learn how to mitigate these situations and these conflicts, to resolve them as best as can be achieved, and to learn how to coexist. Welcome to the Staten Island Advances from the Scene, a podcast bringing you an inside look at the biggest stories on Staten Island with the reporters who cover them. I'm your host, Eric Bascom, and this week I'm joined by Staten Island Advance public interest and advocacy reporter Kristen Dalton to discuss the state of Staten Island's booming turkey population as some push for relocation and others urge us to embrace our new neighbors. Thanks for joining me today, Kristen. You know, last time we had you on, we were talking about all the coronavirus testing issues on Staten Island during the Omicron wave. So I figured we'd uh, lighten it up this time and, and talk about turkeys. I'm sure you don't mind taking a break from some of the heavier topics every now and then, right? No, thank you for having me. And I, I don't mind at all. You know, it's been COVID all day, every day for just about two years at this point. So I always welcome the opportunity to report about and discuss something other than COVID. Yeah, absolutely. I've found myself in the same boat lately. Anytime we can get away from the doom and gloom for even just a little bit, it's a, it's a nice change of pace. So, you know, you had a couple of turkey stories last month. And one thing that really jumped out to me is that some of the residents said that there's been an increase or, or they believe that there's been an increase in the population since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. I, I was kind of curious why that might be. And do you think that the borough's turkey problem or, or the size of its population is, is worse now than it's ever been? So because there's never been an official turkey count, it's hard to say for certain that there has been an increase in the population of turkeys on Staten Island. But I think part of it might be, especially really early on in the pandemic, is that everybody was home all the time. So maybe they were noticing turkeys more during the day when they otherwise would have been at work or at least not at home. So they noticed them out and about more than usual. And it's also pretty common sense that male turkeys and female turkeys are going to reproduce at some point. And because no turkeys have been relocated in quite some time, I'm sure there have been turkey babies that have been made (laughs) during that time that naturally have been born and there's just been an increase because of that. You made a good point about people not really being out and about as much. The the daily travel, the the amount of people commuting on a daily basis is lower. So maybe the turkeys are getting a little more uh, brazen in their uh, in their efforts. And w- one thing I noticed too is not only does it seem like there's more turkeys now, but they're also kind of venturing into uh, places that we hadn't seen them before. Right early on, a lot of the thing was, oh, they're on the east shore. They're all around the hospital. They're they're all you know congregated kind of in that area. But now you go around the borough and you can see turkeys in places that you hadn't in the past. Like I was on Forest Avenue the other day and there was a turkey in front of Starbucks. You know what I mean? So it's kind of weird now. I'm wondering if you've also kind of heard that same thing. Absolutely. I mean, I live in Mariner's Harbor. I'm right off of Forest Avenue by Richmond Avenue in that vicinity. Mm -hmm. And I want to say it was probably about two or three years ago at this point, but there was a turkey in my backyard. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, how did it get there? Like, how, right, did they and they've been the spotted in, in Silver Lake and, like you said, different parts of 
Forest Avenue on the North Shore when they used to be primarily mid-island by the hospital. So they have definitely uh, have ventured out to other parts of the borough, for sure. You know, obviously the turkeys can, can be a nuisance sometimes. They squawk. They're, they're kind of all over the place. But there's also some other bigger issues that, that kind of come with the, that rising turkey population. So I'm curious kind of what you heard from residents about the, the different ways that they can kind of negatively impact the borough. Sure. So the biggest complaint that I've heard and probably Probably what I would consider the most serious complaint is property damage. A lot of these turkeys, they're jumping out of trees onto people's cars. They're leaving dents. They're pecking people's cars. Their nails are scratching them. I remember I did a story many years ago at this point. This one car looked like it had been hit up by bullets or something. I mean, it was, there were scratches and peck marks all over the cars and then they're going in bushes and shrubbery in front of people's houses you know they're damaging that and people are spending money on landscaping then there was one instance a few years ago i'm sure you remember the story because we reported on it and there were probably other instances that we just haven't heard about where the turkey laid eggs next to somebody's front door and then the turkey became aggressive whenever somebody went to go walk in or out of that home. So obviously that's a big concern. Smaller nuisances kind of range from them holding up traffic. I mean, it's pretty comical at first, but when you've got somewhere to go and there's a row of turkey holding up traffic in both directions for like 15 minutes, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The property damage does seem to be the the biggest issue there. And, you know, y- you mentioning them kind of jumping down onto people's cars. Have you ever seen the turkeys get up into those trees? That's like one of the scariest things that they do because everyone kind of assumes they can't really fly like that and they can't fly long distances. But if you ever see the the really big turkeys flap their wings and get, you know, 10, 20 feet in the air to get into those branches. It is terrifying. It's terrifying, but it's also kind of impressive. <laughs> when it you is. Think it's about, very impressive. When you think about, like you said, how massive some of these birds yeah. are that they're able to do that, it's it is pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. And then you think about them on the way down, if they land on your car, they're pretty heavy. So like you said, sharp talons, all that kind of stuff, peck marks. Yes. So obviously an issue there. It, it's funny and it isn't. Like there's seriousness to the issue, obviously, but it's also, you know, turkeys flying around and, and jumping on people's cars. So <laughs> you got to take it for what it is, I suppose. But uh, let's back up a little bit and talk about how this all started. So how much do we really know about when the turkeys first arrived on Staten Island, how they got here, and, and kind of why the population has grown so much over the years? So I've yet to speak with any anybody, city official, state official, or otherwise, who knows for certain, who knows definitively how the turkeys actually got here. But there's one theory or one story that everybody seems to be going with, and that is... In the late 1990s, um, a Staten Island resident had nine turkeys, I guess they were pets, and let them go at South Beach Psychiatric Center, and it kind of went from there, right? Like I said earlier, male, female turkeys, they're gonna, you know, do the thing, and they're gonna, (laughs) they're gonna repopulate, and, and that's what happened, and looking back at the Staten Island Advance archives, we started having, or started documenting turkeys around 1996, uh, where the first time we had pictures of turkeys. And actually, um, it was in Annadale. Interesting. Yeah, at that point. Some of the photos were uh, from areas in Annadale, but then the rest of them, like we had said previously, were we're in the Mid Island area. That's the story that everybody seems to be sticking with. I think that's how how we have the problem. I don't know who that resident is. I don't know yeah. if she's aware or that he's aware of the problem that they've caused. But that that's why we've got them. I I kind of love that as our turkey origin story, so to speak. That that, that one uh, chaotic good uh, resident, or chaotic neutral maybe, uh, it, it just decided that they were going to unleash turkeys on Staten Island and let them repopulate and slowly start to take over. Um, but <laughs> anyway, so obviously now lots of turkeys, like we said. But for for years, local elected officials have have made efforts to relocate these turkeys off of Staten Island. They did a little bit, and then they hit some road bumps. 
Bumps with some of their later efforts. And so can you just tell us a little bit about these relocation efforts and also kind of where the borough's current elected officials stand on the matter? It was back in, I think, 2016, right? They called it a milestone agreement. It was with Staten Island University Hospital, because as we've said, that's where a majority of the turkeys were congregating, the State Department of Environmental Conservation, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture, because there's different permits and and things involved as far as capturing the turkeys and relocating them. There was funding, and they made these agreements that they were going to capture and relocate the turkeys that were congregating by the hospital, and they brought them to a sanctuary upstate. So that was really the first effort from officials to take care of the turkey problem. Mm -hmm. Like everything, it it costs money to do that. So after a while, they got funding. Former Mid-Island Councilman Stephen Matteo really championed the effort because it was, you know, in his district. And there were some other attempts to relocate the turkeys to this upstate sanctuary. But it became an issue because the sanctuary needed to expand the, uh, I don't know if gates is the right word, but the area, the fencing, where these turkeys were living just because they had so many of them at this point. Once Councilman Matteo got the discretionary funding, the sanctuary had to make some changes according to, to the state's guidelines and the federal guidelines. And for one reason or another, they weren't able to do it anymore. They could not relocate any more turkeys. I think the last thing that we had reported is they had close to 300 turkeys that they'd already gotten from Staten Island. And there were still wow. a ton here. So, y- yeah. you know, you could you could only imagine how many turkeys we're really talking about are on Staten Island. The turkeys aren't going to be relocated anymore. As for the current Mid-Island Councilman, which is David Carr, um, he was Councilman Matteo's chief of staff. So he is well aware of the turkey problem. He, you know, helped Matteo during his time in office with the turkey situation. So Carr understands that it is a quality of life issue, that it is a nuisance, and wants something to be done. He has had conversations with the elected officials to do something. Um, The state has now taken a stance where they say that they don't believe that relocation is the best solution to the turkey problem, but they are open to to conversations to figure out what to do. And Carr met with them once already last month. I think he said that there was another sit-down coming up soon, so uh, I will be following up with him to see how that's going. Right. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that you noted that the state has kind of taken the position that relocation isn't the right long term solution here, because you also spoke to some people on Staten Island who kind of share that belief and said that they think that we should be embracing these these turkeys as our neighbors, as opposed to trying to relocate them and get them out of here. I'm curious first, kind of how you found these turkey supporters and then, you know, what they had to say with you about why we should allow them to stay. They found me uh, when I wrote the first article about Carr and the turkeys. They responded saying basically the same thing that the state said, is that they don't believe that relocation is the best option because unless you get every single turkey that's on Staten Island, they're going to keep having babies and there are going to be more turkeys. And there's just no way to know that we got all of them, especially because, like we said earlier, they're all over Staten Island now. It's not like they're just in that one central location. They're everywhere. So it's just impossible. And, you know, the the man that I spoke with, his name was David. He said that it's a good thing, you know, that the turkeys are on Staten Island. It means that the borough's ecosystem is thriving Um, And what we really need to do is figure out a way to coexist. David Karapkin is a licensed wildlife rehabber and advocate. The people who are upset about the turkeys are certainly loud and, um, you know, or can be. And you don't necessarily 
hear people, you know, shouting from the rooftops how, you know, they, they like the turkeys, they appreciate the turkeys, or, you know, don't want the turkeys to be sent to a slaughterhouse. You know, obviously you're aware that Staten Island is home to a lot of different wildlife, and some of the wildlife is new, newer, and hasn't been seen in many years and is reemerging, and that's not, that's not specifically unique to Staten Island. There are lots of places across the country where turkeys are making kind of a renaissance and other wildlife are coming into suburban and urban areas. And so this is a theme that we're seeing in lots of suburban and urban areas with conflicts with, with wildlife and a lot of people complain and they're called nuisance wildlife. And I look at this through a broader lens of how do we coexist with the wildlife that's around us? How do we address the issues that the presence of wildlife in close proximity to humans is, is causing? The reality is that like you said, unless you get every last one, but I, I don't see that happening. We're going to have turkeys on Staten Island. So shouldn't the goal be to, to learn how to mitigate these situations and these conflicts, to resolve them as best as can be achieved, and to learn how to coexist? And, and, and I also speak to the people who appreciate that, you know, we can live in the biggest city in the world and have wildlife. He understands that there are serious concerns like property damage and aggressive turkeys, um, but there are ways to mitigate and find solutions to the conflicts that people have with wild turkeys. And, you know, one of those things he said was that at state DEC or, you know, whatever state agency is going to be responsible for it is really... Uh, creating an agency or a small task force of a few people that when there is a specific problem, Staten Islanders can call and this person or these people will be able to tell you immediately and directly how to handle it. We'll be right back. The Mayor of Maple Avenue is a powerful multi-part podcast about Sean Sinisey a victim of former Penn State football coach Jerry Sandusky, who was arrested 10 years ago for numerous child sexual abuse charges. The podcast series is written and hosted by Pulitzer Prize winning reporter Sarah Gannam, who takes listeners into the world of addiction rehabilitation, where society can be quick to celebrate the consequences for abusers while not addressing the needs of their victims. Subscribe now to The Mayor of Maple Avenue wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, the idea of a Staten Island Turkey Task Force is amazing. I, I want to get that up and running right away. I'd like to figure out where I can submit my resume. Um, but so so you've spoken to the state DEC, like you said. You spoke to the elected officials, the wildlife advocates. So obviously a little bit of speculation here. But where do you see this story going next? Do you think that there will be another relocation effort, even though the state has kind of uh, put that down? Or do you think we're just going to need to kind of adjust to having them here long term? I personally, I don't believe that there's going to be any more relocation. Um, It costs a lot of money to relocate the turkeys. And again, you know, similar to to what the, um, we'll call him a (laughs) pro-turkey advocate, you know, the, the advocate says is unless we get every single turkey, it's, it, it seems like it's going to be a waste of money. That money could be better spent doing something which he mentioned. It's called egg addling, which actually terminates embryo development. So if the turkeys lay the eggs, you know, if, if we had this Staten Island turkey task force, <laughs> um, you know, if somebody has the turkeys in, on their property, they can call this number and say, hey, we've got six eggs, we've got ten eggs, the people can come they can terminate that embryo development to make sure that the population doesn't get any bigger while we also use the money to work on mitigation efforts. Maybe it's trying to bring them all to one central locations to clip their wings so that they can't fly and get into the trees and jump onto people's cars and and cause that property damage. So I think that there are a lot of different options from what I've heard from the advocates as well as from the state. And mm-hmm. it's it's going to take some creative thinking, but I, I, I do think that there is a solution here, but I don't think it's going to be one thing. I think it's going to be a combination of, of different techniques and different things that, 
that's going to work. Yeah, and that egg addling thing that you mentioned is really interesting to me because it's pretty similar to kind of what we did with the deer issue, right, with the vasectomy program. So it's instead of getting rid of all the animals, you just kind of try and slow down their reproduction process and, and make it so that they're not, you know, having babies at such a high rate. So we're not necessarily relocating the turkeys or the deers, but we're giving the deers vasectomies and we're egg addling is the way you described it, which was an, uh, I, I had never heard of that before this uh, turkey story. But um, yeah, I think that's interesting. And that seems to be kind of a, a common sense solution to kind of slow the growth of the population without actually having to get rid of it. Right. Population control while we figure out the best way to deal with what we have, but we're making sure that the population doesn't grow so out of control that there is no way to deal with them. One thing that I imagine made this story a little bit more difficult to handle, or at least it typically does for me, is that there's multiple levels of government trying to work together here, right? You have the city representative dealing with the state DEC, and the original relocation effort had some federal government mixed in there. So can you just give our listeners a little insight into what it's like working on those types of stories and having kind of uh, going back and forth between those different levels of government when uh, not anyone sometimes wants to take responsibility for anything. It certainly can be challenging because it really is a lot of back and forth and running around and just trying to get everybody on the same page. It's not just this story. There are tons of other stories that I've worked on where there are multiple levels of government involved and trying to get responses from everybody uh, is, is challenging. But I have to say that For this particular story, it actually wasn't too bad. And I think it was really helpful that Councilman Carr had previously reached out to the state DEC before I'd even gotten involved and before I'd even started working on this story. So there was already that level of communication between the two of them. And that made it a little bit easier once, once I came in and needed information from the both of them. It was fresh in their minds and they were both very willing to talk to me. So this particular story, it wasn't as much of a headache as, as some others have been. So before we wrap up, uh, I figured we'd have a little fun with it. I want to hear your favorite Staten Island turkey story, whether it's something we've reported on or just something you've seen or heard from a friend. I I have a couple in mind myself, but I'll let you go first. (laughs) Okay, so this is um, actually my own personal experience (laughs) with the turkeys. So I was pregnant with my first daughter. So this was back in 2013. I was, I would say about eight months pregnant or like very early on into the ninth month of my pregnancy, right? So I'm big, I'm wobbling, (laughs) you know, (laughs) my doctor's office happens to be on the corner of Seaview and Mason Avenue, which is right across the street from Staten Island University Hospital, where all the turkeys are. I was walking from my car to the doctor's office. I'm walking down the block and all of a sudden a turkey jumped out of the tree, landed, I'm not exaggerating, less than five feet in front of me. This giant turkey just fell out of the tree. I got so scared. I swear to you, I thought I was going to go into labor right there on the (laughs) sidewalk. I was terrified. I didn't, and and I'm not kidding, at that point, I didn't even know that turkeys could fly or like like jump up into trees. I was like, holy crap, where did that turkey come from? Like, I was shaking. I was so scared. Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, I actually... (laughs) You mentioned not knowing that they can can fly and get up into those trees. I had the same situation a few years back. I was uh, you visiting were pregnant the too. I would that okay. I was. I had a similar situation. I had a similar situation. So I was uh, visiting the hospital fairly regularly, visiting a family member who was. Monday on the CW from the creators of All American. Welcome to Brixton University. A new chapter begins. Well, if it ain't Simone Hicks. I'm juggling school, tennis. It's your journey. What if I made the wrong choice coming to college here? You do you. You are looking at the new face of HBCU baseball. What if I'm not good enough? Basically, you're scared every damn day, bro. The highly anticipated new series. Never let anything keep you from your dream. All American Homecoming, premiering Monday on the CW. 
is in there. And as you mentioned, the turkeys are kind of all over that area. And so I parked my car kind of on the corner of, of Mason and TV. You know, they have those uh, 90 degree angle spots that you can kind of go into. Yes. Yeah. So again, I didn't, I see the turkeys on the road, like walking across the street every now and then. I wasn't aware that they could get up like that. But then it's, it's kind of dark out. It's late at night. And I'm, I get out of my car and I turn around and I look and I just see these large shadowy figures in the branches staring down at me. And I'm like, what is going on here? Like, what are those things? And then all of a sudden, one of them jumps down. And similarly to you, I wasn't quite as close, but right on the sidewalk in front of me. And I was like, how did you get there to here to there? I don't know. It was <laughs> it, very scary. But the one that I wanted, to, the, the one that always sticks out to me is one of our former colleagues who lives kind of in that area as well, uh, the East Shore. And they were going out for an assignment or trying to go out for an assignment. But they get out to their car and there is a turkey just standing on the roof of their car and refusing to move and you know they're making sounds at it they're doing whatever i vaguely remember this story yes it got to the point where i believe if i'm remembering correctly that she started throwing snowballs at the turkey to get it <laughs> off of her car so she could go cover this assignment for us which is just truly true dedication to the to the job uh, <laughs> that is a staten but, island story oh my it really is, yeah. And it's so funny because, I mean, these are just, you know, a couple of examples, but I'm sure that everyone who is listening to this podcast has their own unique, terrifying turkey story. But, <laughs> oh, man. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Kristen. It was a great conversation. I had a lot of fun doing it, and I hope that our uh, listeners have a lot of fun listening as well. Yes, thank you so much for having me. It was very nice to um, talk about something non-COVID related and, and have a few laughs and uh, I, I hope to have a, um, you know, an update for you soon about what the decision is between Carr and the state and, and, you know, let our listeners and our readers know what's going to happen with the turkeys. Yeah, if there's an update, we'll be talking about it. <laughs> Thanks again. Did you know the Staten Island Ferry used to charge riders a 50 cent round trip fare before the fare was eliminated in July 1997? Thank you for listening to the Staten Island Advances from the Scene. If you like what you've heard, please make sure to rate and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and visit SILive.com for the latest on all these stories and more. Thank you for supporting local journalism.